1,000 viewers. It's so good that you get to be with us for our live stream. Feel free to come along to this live stream every Sunday at 11 a.m., 12.30 p.m., 2 p.m., and 4 p.m. It's an honor to be able to encourage you every weekend. And uh, if you're in our area on any Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m., or 11 a.m., come and join us for one of these services. We'll make you feel right at home. There's a lot of friendly people here, a lot of loving people here, kind-hearted people, and we'll just give you, give you an amazing invite, welcome, all of those things. And uh, I want to also let you know we've been praying for you guys and your family to have an amazing future and to have a great future. Anybody excited about that? That's our, our prayer focus now for you guys is for your future to get better and better and better. And I believe following Christ is not meant to be a religion. I believe it's meant to be a relationship. And my wife and I, in our relationship, it gets better and better. You know, the older you get, the better it gets. And that's the way it should be with relationship with God. And uh, life gets better and better. You know, I'd like to start out today by asking you a question. And uh, what is it that makes you happy in your life? What do you get happy about? I get really happy when I see my wife happy. And I had a friend this last week gave me a big uh, a, a sign that said, if, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. But you know, Carmen, Dr. Carmen is one of the most happy people I've seen. In our home, we have just joy and happiness in our place. And, and it's because she has a happy heart, a hope-filled heart. And uh, we're talking a little bit about that. We're talking about hope. We're talking about truth that, that sets us free. And we're talking about the truth of hope that will set us free. And uh, so we're going to jump into that today, right now, in fact. This is week three on this uh, focus on hope, the truth about hope. The first week, I talked about the New Testament word for hope. The second week, I talked about the Old Testament word for hope. And today, we're going to be talking about a few other things. Week three, let hope burst forth. I don't know if you've ever been in a tsunami. I hope, I hope not in Alberta. But <laughs> a big wave coming in. But uh, if, if you see a massive wave, I was looking at surfing on the, on the YouTube the other night, or it was Facebook, I think, or whatever it was, something on there. And I'm looking at surfing and these massive swells and waves coming in. And, and I was thinking of Australia, thinking of home, and, and now Alberta's home. And I'm thinking these massive waves come in and swamp these people, or the riders, they get on the wave and they have a great experience. And that's what God wants for us in the word hope. He wants hope to swamp us, to overflow us and take us forward in life. You know, life can get a little bit, get a little bit difficult at times. But God wants to lift us and draw us through and like a wave of his hope and joy around our lives. And so Romans chapter 12 verse 12 says, Let this hope burst forth like a wave, like a tsunami within you. Releasing a continual joy. The manifestation of hope is joy. I want to talk about that for a few moments after I've read this verse. Don't give up in a time of trouble. Anybody had a time of trouble? Okay, well, proof is you didn't give up. Okay, you're still living. You're still here. Don't give up in a time of trouble. It says, Be commute, but commune with God at all times. Hope, if you remember from last week and the week before, is a confident assurance in the goodness of God, that God is going to come through, that God will work it all out, that God's got his hand on our lives, even though we don't see it in the midst of some struggling times. God is there. Hope is a confidence. It's a concrete assurance, a positivity, a trust, and it's so strong on the inside that we can't deny it. That is what the word hope means. And now that hope and that assurance breeds joy. I was talking to my son Josh on the way to church this morning. Give Josh a cheer. He's around here somewhere. I think he's working with the kids or something. He's here somewhere. And uh, he's, uh, so he, well, I was talking to him this morning. I said, imagine if someone came up to you and said, hey, I bought a lottery ticket for you. And, uh, and, and you're like, oh, thanks. And he said, yeah, yeah, wait a second. I got, a, I got a phone call from the lottery office, and I got a letter in the mail from them too, and they said, this ticket has won. He must have been a really good guy because he told the guy, Josh, about it now. And 
And so he, he says, hey, so all I do now is I take you to the lottery office, and this ticket will give you a million dollars. And I said to Josh, I, if someone did that to me, they, they said, I, I bought a lottery ticket. Now I'm gonna, you, you take this thing, and you're going to get a million dollars. I'd be going there. I'd be so excited, going, what am I going to spend it on? What am I going to give it on? What am I going to do with it? Hand it over. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a joy with it for a little while. I'm going to have it in my hands for a few moments, and I'm going to get really happy about it. <laughs> and and I was thinking all that, and I said, that ticket is hope. That ticket is what we have in hope. Hope is not, if you remember the last two weeks, hope is not positive thinking. Hope is not hype. Hope is not hype. Hope is a rope. It's, it's, a, it's a strong rope that is attached to an anchor. Hope is a rope. Everyone say, hope is a rope. Hope is a confidence. It's a rope that can't be broken. It's connected to an anchor that holds our heart in promise. Hope is powerful. And so we've got to receive this hope. And we've got to believe and joyfully accept this hope. Many years ago, uh, so what we, what we see is when you get this hope, peace comes around your life. Assurance, trust, but joy does as well. When you get that ticket, I'm not saying you're going to get that ticket, but if you did, you'd be joyful. You'd be like, oh, I have the promise. I know it. I've got the ticket in my hand. Hope in God's goodness makes you joyful. Man, I'm going to have a great day. My marriage is going to be amazing. And my kids are going to work out okay. When you get that hope, you give God permission. Now, this joy that comes springing out of it, the verse we just heard about within you, releasing a continual joy. That is a spiritual thing. I can't, I can't say to you, be happy, be happy, be happy, be happy, and you'll know it. Be happy, and you'll show it. Be happy, and have. You, you can't just say, be, everyone say, be happy, be happy, be happy. <laughs> well, I'm not that happy, but I'm going to say it. I'm happy, I'm happy. No. <laughs> Hope manifests joy. When you get what's real hope, I'm not talking about positive thinking, which is good. Posi think positive. That's better to think positive than negative. Okay. But then there's this spiritual thing that happens when you get into God's presence and you have a relationship with Him. The hope, the reassurance of your soul, confidence brings a manifestation of joy. Many years ago, I, uh, I think it was almost 20, 20 something years ago, was my, I'd just become a new believer. And, uh, and I remember going along to a meeting in a place called Tamworth in the outback of Australia. And I went to hear this guy called Pastor Neil Myers speak. He eventually became my pastor. And uh, I heard him. There was a few hundred people at this meeting. And he was talking about our hope in God and confidence in the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. And, and as he got up to speak and he's sort of sharing this joy, all of a sudden there's a group of people over that side of the room started laughing. And I've only ever seen this happen once in my whole Christian life. They started laughing. And, and it's, who's ever been to the hockey when it gets a little boring in the, you know, the thing and it starts throwing beer cans up? I don't know. Alfie doesn't throw beer cans. He, he throws pop cans. Okay. <laughs> you know, throw, anybody done the wave at the hockey? Done the wave? Okay. So, so what happened was in church, we had the wave in church. It wasn't beer cans, and it wasn't coffee cans. It was, it was people getting happy. And all of a sudden, people started laughing, and it was like a wave. And as the wave went through, they kept laughing, and these people were laughing, and it was coming towards me, and I was thinking, this is different. What am I going to do? In my mind, I'm thinking, what am I going to do? And I thought, well, I believe this is God. If it's God, and I feel happy, I'm going to show it. <laughs> if I am really happy, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to fake it. I don't want to fake it, but I just thought, well, I'm going to, do. And, and as it laughed, I got here, I, I felt this inspiration and a refreshing and an excitement, and I just laughed, <laughs> and I laughed and laughed, and then and the wave went past, and I thought, oh my God, they're not all cracked, they're not all weird, because it just happened to me, and I'm excited. Well, that was the spirit of joy. I've only seen it ever happen once in a meeting, and it was the spirit of joy that came, it was a spiritual thing. Now, that's this joy that can come up and out of our lives from the confident hope that God is good and God will be good to you brings joy. It's a spiritual thing. And I know I look crazy and I look happy today. It's because of the confidence. Anybody happy today? Anybody excited about what Jesus wants to do in your life? So we've got to give ourselves to this hope. And what, mean, what it means is we've got to take, take the negative mindsets out and say, wait a second, God is good. Wait a second, God does want good for me. 
Wait a second, God has a plan for my marriage to get better and better. We have a great marriage, by the way. But God, God does have a plan for my children. God does have a plan for my business or my, my career or my vocation. God does have a plan for me. Or if I'm 80 years old, 90 years old, I'm not finished. I'm not dead. I'm only just getting started. God's still moving in my life. 15, 16 year old, you might know much about life, but God's got a plan. And if you have a confident assurance that there's a plan and God's in control, brings joy. At least it brings some sort of hope and, and some sort of security and some sort of peace. But then this joy erupts on the inside. Have you ever been to a volcano? I don't know if you've ever been to a volcano, but we were in, in uh, Hawaii one time and there was a volcano in Hawaii. Man, those Hawaiian volcanoes are crazy. The, the thing just erupts and it goes, you know, the volcanic lava and everything. That's the joy that will erupt when you get the hope of God. See a happy person? They're not on drugs in church. Most of you. Most of them aren't on drugs. <laughs> it's God's joy. So that we've got to give ourselves to this hope. We've got to let hope have free reign in our lives. That means as we speak the word of hope, as we give you promise, as we assure you that God is good, you just got to take it in. Everyone say, I agree. I believe. <laughs> Will you do your best to open your heart to receive the good message called the gospel, the good news? Allow this hope to possess your soul. What does that mean? It literally means to take hold of, take ownership of, and lead and guide and influence and inspire. When you allow the hope of God, the hope of his truth, the hope of the gospel, the good news, to arrest your soul and take hold of you, that's where the joy springs up. Now, this joy sets you free. The joy sets you free from negativity, fear, and all those other things. The joy is a strength. Actually, the scripture says, we're going to miss a scripture. We're going to go to Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. The joy that the Lord gives you will make you strong. That word strong there in the original language is fortify, strengthen, bring a confidence, bring a, bring a help and a health and a renewing and a rejuvenation. The strengthening of our inner man and inner woman. The joy God gives you brings strength. And so what I wanted to share today is the hope, the truth about hope that sets you free is that hope will spring up and bring joy that brings great freedom in our lives. Freedom from fear, freedom from depression, freedom from negativity. Do you know hope is a medicine to your soul? L laughter does good like a medicine. Look at your partner and have a little laugh at, I won't laugh at you, but you can laugh at me. Laugh. <laughs> be, be wise, she said that's easy. <laughs> I do some weird things. Men don't laugh at your wives, laugh with your wives. Okay. I'm teasing. So we've got, to, we've got to look at this and let God, hope and freedom are the great connection. Dr. Carmen is going to share with us today how hope and freedom can do an amazing thing with joy and life in our existence. And then she's got a few announcements first. God bless you guys today. As you're watching with us online, give us some hearts today and let us know that you are connected to the family. We've been praying for you and we were declaring over you and your loved ones in the worship time today. And so we are standing with you in agreement. If you're watching with us on Facebook Live, we just encourage you to push the share button so someone else that's on your friends list can actually link on and be able to hear this message about hope, how hope is the great connection to our freedom. And next Sunday is our last Sunday on this series of hope and what we're going to do next Sunday live the restrictions are lifted so you don't have to register for church so it's going to be fantastic we're going to be following all of the guidelines for next Sunday of course and but we want to encourage you next Sunday on the last Sunday on this message of hope that we are going to release the mantle of hope over you and so what it means to release a mantle is that when somebody carries something and God has placed them on it God says what he has freely given to to you, you can freely give away. And so Pastor Steve and I, we carry a mantle of hope over us. That means that when other things try to knock us down, we just bounce right back up, right? We carry a mantle of hope. And so in our live services, 9.30 and 11 a.m. next Sunday, we are going to release that mantle of hope. We're going to follow the restrictions. If they let me touch somebody, it's going to be the first time I've touched somebody in church in a year and a half. I'm going to lay hands on people. We're going to find out what the restrictions are, but I'm going to 
tell you, we're going to release the mantle of hope in the live services next Sunday. And so if you haven't joined us for a while, we want to encourage you, come next Sunday. Come and gather as a community of believers. Let's celebrate together. Let's rejoice together. Let's praise God together. And let's receive that strength of the mantle of hope next Sunday. And so we're going to do that. We're excited about that. And this morning I do have your tithe and offering message. And we're looking at Luke chapter 6 verse 38. It says, for if you give, you will get. Your gift will return to you in full and overflowing measure. Pressed down, shaken together to make room for more and running over. Whatever measure you use to give, large or small, will be used to measure what is given back to you. This morning, I want you to say given back. We talk about giving to God, but the scripture says when we give to God, it says that measure is going to be given back to you. And the, the phrase given back in the dictionary means this, financial assistance, something returned. So God is going to, to the giver, he is going to return. He's going to bring financial assistance to the giver. It says that it'll be pressed down, shaken together, making room for more. And so today as you give, we're going to stand on this promise that it will be given back to you. We're not just throwing money in the air. We're not just shopping at Walmart today. How many know that all Walmart wants is your money? right? All Walmart wants is your money, but with God, God's trying to get something back to you, right? As we give, God says, as we begin to trust him with our finances, he said, I want to give back to you. How many are excited? We have a God who wants to give back to you. And so we're going to declare that over you today as you give, as you're giving online. You can use the app to give. You can text to give. Of course, you can mail in your checks. Those of you who are live today, we have the boxes all clean in the back for you, and they will open up the debit and credit machine at the end of the service for you. But we want to declare and pray over your giving today. So let's take a moment to pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you that you said if we give, it will be given back to the giver. And so, God, this morning we return the tithe, that first 10 percent. God, we thank you as we tithe today that the windows of heaven are open, God. They are open over the tithers of great church in Jesus' name. God, today as we prepare our offerings, as we get to discover and give from our own measure this morning, God, as we give in that measure, Father, we thank you today that it is given back to your givers, God. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. God, favor your givers, increase your givers, create opportunities for your givers. Father, we thank you for blessing your givers so they are always in a position to be able to give again. Father, we thank you for this today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you as you give today. And so we are studying this great connection between freedom and hope. Pastor Steve was sharing this morning about how this hope creates this joy in our life, a lasting joy in our life. And Psalm 42 verse 11 says, you know, wh why am I so disturbed? Why can't I just hope in God? Despite all my emotions, I will believe and I will praise the one who saves me, my God. And so we have all these different emotions that try to come around our life, all these different feelings. How many have had a feeling this morning. Who woke up on the right side of the bed this morning? Who woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning? Okay, okay, you know, you got feelings that come to you, right? And so this morning, I get to share with you what feelings, you know, and emotions does hope dismantle? Don't you like it when something gets built, but, it, but you get to dismantle it, right? It might have got built wrong. It's built in the wrong place, and you get to dismantle it, start again. Dismantle it, build again. And we did a great series on rebuilding after the storm. And if you weren't part of that series, we encourage you to go to greatchurch.ca and, and watch that series. So today, what feelings, what emotions does hope dismantle? The first one is depression. Hope dismantles depression. You know, when you feel depressed, you can feel sad. You can feel hopeless, helpless. There's this emotion, this feeling. And, you know, many of the heroes in the Bible had encounters with depression. Moses, Elijah, David, Jonah. They had moments where they encountered this, this feeling of depression. And Psalm 43 verse 5 says, why am I so depressed? Have you ever asked yourself that? Have you had a moment? You know, why am I so depressed? Why is this turmoil within me? 
Put your hope in God, for I will still praise him, my Savior and my God. And we understand that if depression, if, if hope does not come when someone feels the emotion of depression, people can get suicidal. And we understand that even in our day and age that suicide is at an all-time high, that suicide is a permanent decision to a temporary problem. It's a permanent decision to a temporary problem. And I want to encourage you today, put your hope in God. You're not just hoping something might happen. No, you're putting your hope, your faith, your trust, your connection in God. And hope dismantles depression because hope gives you the reason to praise. And that restores your joy. See, hope, it dismantles that depression and it, it gives you this, this reason to praise. It restores to you the joy, which is your strength to overcome any situation that you face. The second one this morning, the feelings, emotions that hope dismantles is fear, anxiety, stress, worry. The, these four words are really linked together. And, and if you look at fear and anxiety, stress and worry, they are all words that anticipate that something bad may happen in the future. That's what those four words represent. They, they, they come together and they represent an anticipation that something bad might happen. Have any of you ever just had that feeling like something bad might happen, okay? That's what these four words represent. And, and fear and anxiety and stress and worry, they're all rooted in one thing, forgetfulness. They're all rooted in the same thing, fear. You forget that God is stronger. Anxiety, stress, worry. You forget who God is. You forget what God has done. You forget that he is the great I am. They're all rooted in the same thing of forgetfulness. And 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Pour out all your worries and your stress upon him and leave them there. For he always tenderly cares for you. It says that we're actually to take this worry, take this anxiety, take this stress, take it and pour it out before God. Give it over to God. And I love how the scripture says, and leave it there. Have you ever poured it out before God? And by the time you left, you took it back, right? You're like, God, I give this to you. And then you're leaving your time of prayer. You say, I'll just take that back again, right? It says, no, leave it there. Pour out your stress. Pour out your worry. God is strong enough. God can handle it. God was meant to carry it for you. We can't allow ourselves to forget the goodness of God. That God loves you. That he is there for you. That he is greater. And if God is for you, what can stand against you? We can't allow ourselves to forget. And Psalm 103 verse 1 to 2 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. You know, we talked last week that God has given you a permission to talk to yourself. How many talk to yourself a little bit this week, right? It says, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, Carmen. Praise the Lord. It says, talk to yourself. Speak to yourself. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. All my almost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul. And forget not all his benefits. When we remember the benefits of God, it dismantles. That hope in the benefits of God, that hope in the goodness of God, it dismantles fear, worry, stress, anxiety. It says, forget not all his benefits. Now, once in a while, not very often, but once in a while, I stress my husband out. Any, anybody believe that I could once in a while probably stress a man out, okay? You know, so once in a while, I'm not very often, but once in a while, I stress my husband out. And he, you know, he's kind of like a, like a bull breathing, right? You know, he's got this, this, this different kind of breath, this different kind of posture, and I can see him getting kind of agitated. And in that moment when I've stressed him out or he's a little bit agitated because I think something's a little simpler than it is or I think something should be done a little faster than he's doing it, whatever it is, and he gets that, you know, you know the bull breathing. Come on, ladies, men. Anybody saw a bull breathe, right? You know, he's got the bull breathing. I'm stressing him out a little bit. In that moment, I always remind him about the benefits of being married to me. <laughs> I always say, oh, just don't forget the benefits of having me in your life. And I begin to list some of the good qualities about me, right? And I, I like, remember this benefit about me. And then I always go to the place that I say, remember when you were in Australia and you were all alone. 
and you prayed and you said, God, send me a wife, God, and make her. How many know the story this morning? Okay, send me a wife. And I say, and you were all alone and you were lonely and you were crying out to God. Don't forget the benefits that come with me in the middle of it. Do you know what God says for you? Don't forget the benefits of God. You might be going through something. You might have some stress in your life right now. Focus on the benefits. Begin to see the benefits of serving God. Remind yourself, don't be a forgetful Christian who can't remember the goodness of God, who can't see where God has already come through for you. Begin to remind yourself of the goodness of God. Hope dismantles stress, worry, anxiety, and fear because hope puts our future in the hands of a loving, caring God. See, that's how we're able to overcome stress, fear, anxiety, worry. Hope puts our future in the hands of a loving, caring God. Number three this morning, what feelings, emotions does hope dismantle? Hope dismantles the feeling of frustration. That feeling of frustration, you know, you experience frustration when a desire is delayed. Anybody ever notice that? When a desire is delayed, you experience frustration. Now, this can be a minor thing, right? This can be like a minor delay in traffic. You get stuck behind an accident. You know you're going to be late. How many feel a little bit frustrated, right? You know, you get behind a slow driver. There's, there's no place to pass. You get a little bit frustrated. How many have ever been to a restaurant? You ordered something, but they forgot to put your order in. And you had to sit longer. Give me a wave. Give me a wave. And you experience a little bit of frustration, right? It can be a minor feeling of frustration or it can be a major feeling of frustration. Where you feel like I've been overlooked at work. I've been passed up for a promotion. There, there's a desire, a dream in my heart that, that, that hasn't come to pass yet. So frustration can be major. Frustration can be minor. But Psalm 37 verse 8 says, do not be angry and frustrated. Do not fret, that only leads to trouble. Have you ever noticed when you get that, that frustration and you get frustrated and you get all stirred up inside that the only thing that's going to come out of that is more trouble, right? You know, the only thing that's going to come out of that is more delays, more setbacks, right? But, but if we'll put our hope in God in the midst of a frustrating situation, in the midst of a delay, you have a desire. There's been a slight delay. You put your hope in God. You believe that God's going to turn it around for your good. You believe that God is moving in that midst. You believe that there's a, something that's going to happen out of this situation, you know, the more frustration builds up in someone's life, that's when they become angry and bitter towards others and towards life. And if you've ever met an older person who's angry at life, you've seen something that's very sad. But if you ever met an older person that's full of hope and joy and age is just a number on a piece of paper, it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference, the age of your birthday I, I like having birthdays because I like being celebrated, but, but so it don't matter. Just knock the number up. It doesn't bother me, right? But, but, you know, some people, they get so concerned about a number. And if you see someone who's frustrated with life, they become bitter at others, and they become bitter at life. Instead of becoming hopeful and full of more passion and full of more joy and recognizing, oh, my God, I'm so thankful I woke up with breath in my lungs this morning. How many this morning were just thankful for another day, right? Like, you're like, wow, this is good. I get another day to experience something. I get another shot. I get another kick at the can, right? I get another shot to fulfill my purpose, fulfill my destiny, to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And Romans 5 verse 5 says, and this hope is not a disappointing fantasy. And a lot of times people have disappointing fantasies in their life because they put their hope in people. If everybody just does what I want them to do, I'm going to be happy. Who's been alive long enough to know everybody doesn't do what you want them to do? Give me a wave, okay? Your kids aren't going to do what you want them to do. Your parents aren't going to do what you want them to do. Your employees, your boss, your neighbors, your friends, your colleagues, nobody's going to do what you want them to do usually, okay? And so it, it's a disappointing fantasy. We get this fantasy. They're all going to do what I want them to do. I'm going to have the good life. And they're hoping you're going to do what they want you to do, and they're going to have the good life. It's a disappointing fantasy. But when our hope is in God 
and the promise that he has for us and what he has said is true for us and true for our future and true for our life. It doesn't depend on other people's cooperation. It doesn't depend on if somebody else gets all their ducks in a row. This is between me and my maker. This is between you and your God. It's not reliant on anybody else. It's a personal relationship with Jesus. And when your hope is on God, it is not a disappointing fantasy. Now this hope begins to dismantle frustration because it shows, this hope shows things can change. See, if it's between you and God, things can change. If your hopes in somebody else is going to do what you want them to do, it requires them to change. And people don't like change. But if your hope is between you and God, there's this, it dismantles, dismantles frustration because now there's hope that there's change because it's just you and God. And if you and God work together as a team, nothing's impossible. And if you let God change you, and if you let God do something great on the inside of you, nothing is impossible because it's about you and God and your relationship with God. And it does not depend on anybody else. And that is not a disappointing fantasy. When your hope is in the right direction, your hope will bring you such a fulfillment in life. Number four, the feelings and emotions that dismantle hope. Number four is guilt. It dismantles guilt. You know, the most crippling experience in life is guilt. It weighs you down, steals your joy. It's like a crushing burden over your life. And in order for us to deal with guilt, you have to know where does guilt come from, right? Where, where does it come from? And there's a big difference between conviction and guilt, you know, there's such a big, big difference between these two words. And, and it's proven that conviction, conviction is the prompting of the Holy Spirit to direct our hearts to the thoughts and actions that we have that were not pleasing to God and not beneficial to our future. That's what conviction is. It's when the Holy Spirit grabs hold of your heart and shows you that there's an area of your life, an action, a thought, a, a process of thinking that wasn't pleasing to God and it wasn't beneficial for your future. So the Holy Spirit comes around and, and shows us, oh, Carmen, that, was, that wasn't a good decision. Well, why does the Holy Spirit show me? Why is that conviction come on me so I don't make the same mistake again? Because it's not beneficial to my future. That's what conviction is. And conviction comes from God, and God's motive is to bring you into a greater future of healing, joy, and new opportunities. So that conviction grabs hold of you to draw you into something that is greater. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 says, If we are freely admit our sins when his light uncovers them, he, will faith, he is faithful to forgive us every single time. And so when that conviction comes, we realize, oh, I messed up. How many think you probably messed up this week? How many think you messed up today? Okay. So when that conviction comes, we, we realize, oh. And it says when we say, oh, God, I'm sorry, I messed up. It says every single time his forgiveness comes over you. Now, guilt is exactly the opposite. With guilt, there's no clear path to God. With guilt, there's no clear path to forgiveness. And with guilt, there is no clear path to a beautiful future that God has in store for you. So guilt actually separates you from God. When people feel guilty, they run from God. When people feel guilty, they run from church. When people feel guilty, they, they, they run from their small group. Why? Because it tries to separate you from the good future God has. Guilt actually tries to separate you from the goodness of God, the, the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, the joy of God, the empowerment of God to overcome and live in victory. So guilt makes you want to run and hide. Give me a wave if you ever wanted to run and hide. Hope, not today, okay. Not today, that's a good thing. Not today, right? That's, so that's where, what guilt means. And so maybe you've thought these kind of guilty feelings in your life, you know, I'm being punished. Anyone ever thought, I'm being punished for what I did in my past? Give me a wave if you've ever thought that, okay? Um, I've done some really bad things, and there's no way that God can forgive me for this one, right? The, 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 it's, too, it's too much. I've just, I've OD'd with God, okay? Like, I've just done too much. I'm sure God, anybody ever had that thought? Anybody ever had that thought? You know, I'm not worthy of his forgiveness. Come on, give me a wave. I'm not worthy of his forgiveness. Or I don't deserve it. I don't deserve his forgiveness. These are the feelings of guilt. And these feelings are not from God. 
they are from the enemy. This is not the way God speaks over his kids. It's not the way God speaks over his family. It's not the way God speaks over his church. These are the words of condemnation and these are the words of the enemy. Guilt comes from the enemy to keep you feeling far from God, to try to steal your drive, your passion, your motivation, and your joy. The enemy, and John chapter 10 verse 10 is a great verse for you to focus on on your homework this week. The enemy comes to bring that guilt, that condemnation over your life, to limit you, to box you in where you cannot experience the freedom that God has for you. Where conviction by the Holy Spirit just says, oop, Carmen, you missed it a little bit. Okay, I'm sorry, Lord, and it gets me right back on track again. It's so different. And so how do, how do we change and get out of these feelings of guilt? How do we get out and become a guilt-free Christian? How many want to be a guilt-free Christian, okay? A guilt-free Christian. We've got to see ourselves under his forgiveness continually. We have to hope and, and have that hope in the right channel of his forgiveness. And Psalm 51 verse 1 to 2 says, God, give me mercy from your fountain of forgiveness. I want this week for you to see yourself under the Niagara Falls of the forgiveness of God. You know, under, I mean, I'm not talking about a, a little trickle somewhere. I'm talking about under the fountain of his forgiveness. It begins to just clear all the guilt away. Clear it away out of your life. It says, I know your abundant love is enough to wash away my guilt. What you need is an extra dose of the abundant love of God, the abundant hope of God, because your compassion is so great. Take away the shameful guilt. Forgive the, to the full extent of my rebellious ways and erase the deep stain on my conscience. It's like, just, just clean me up, God. All this guilt that's trying to come around my life, all, the, all this negativity that's trying to hold me back, I come under the fountain. I come under the Niagara Falls, God, of your forgiveness. Hope dismantles guilt because hope shows you freedom through the obedience to the word of God. It shows you the way out in every situation. It shows you the way to walk. It says a good man's step, a good woman's step are ordered by the Lord. It's going to show you the next step in your life right into freedom. And the last one this morning, what feelings and emotions does hope dismantle? It's shame. And really that goes with guilt in a lot of ways, but it's different. But it's that shame, that, that sometimes that feeling of shame where we know we've missed it. Let's be honest today. We've missed it. Even on our good days, let's be honest, we've missed it. I mean, I've had some pretty good days. But I really missed it. And on my bad days, whoa, have I missed it, right? You know, I mean, you know, you do not have a perfect pastor. Praise the Lord, right? I mean, I mean, on my best days, I still miss it. Even if I'm watching my mouth perfectly. And I'm like, today, I'm just going to make sure that everything is like, something comes out occasionally, right? Anybody give me a wave if something comes out once in a while, right? Okay, and it says, there it is. It's like, oh, I thought I, I thought I'd mastered that thing, right? Okay, and you got I mean, I have taken so many things back in Jesus' name. I take that back, I take that back, I take that back in Jesus' name, right? But shame tries to come around our life, saying, but you're not perfect. And the enemy doesn't tell you, and nor is anybody else. See, that shame makes us think that the whole world's perfect but us. Shame makes us think that the whole church is perfect but us. Shame makes us believe that, that everybody else has got all their ducks in a row and I'm the only person who doesn't, right? I mean, that's what shame does. Shame makes us live in the past instead of embracing this hope of the future. And so hope dismantles shame. As we put our hope in God, we, we reach out to God. That shame begins to crumble off of our life. No longer does our past dictate our future. No longer are those skeletons in the closet. We're so worried they're going to escape and come out. No, because shame has been dismantled under the hope of the goodness of God. And Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says that hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The reason why hope is dismantled, hope dismantles shame is because of the Holy Spirit. And I want to pray for you today for the power of the Holy Spirit. Because hope will dismantle that shame. Hope will dismantle that guilt. 
Hope will dismantle that frustration, that stress, that worry, that anxiety, that fear. Hope dismantles depression. Hope dismantles these, these feelings that sometimes we experience. But hope dismantles them so that we can step into the future that God has for us. And that's what I want to pray for you for today. As you're watching with us online right now, we want to pray over you today. We encourage you to stay linked up at this moment. We're going to pray as a community of faith. And as we do that, we encourage you to pray out loud with us. Go into receiving mode with us as we pray over you, as we declare over you and over your family today. And so today, with every eye closed, every head bowed for a moment, I want to ask two questions today. Number one, if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, maybe you've never asked Jesus, I need you to be the leader leader, the Savior, the Lord of my life. Maybe you've never put your life in the hands of God. I want to encourage you today is the day to do it. Second question I want to ask is if you're in this place today or you're watching online and you say, I've had some of these emotions, but it said, despite the emotions I feel, I'm going to put my hope in God. Despite the feelings I felt when I woke up this morning, I'm going to put my hope in God. It's not wishful thinking. It's not hype. It's not just positive words. I'm going to put my hope in God and what God says about my future. And today, if you say, when I came in here today, as I'm watching this today, I felt that emotion of depression, anxiety, fear, frustration, hopelessness, guilt, shame. You say, I felt that weight on my shoulders. Today, we're going to pray that thing off. We're going to just lift that off with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not by our strength. It's not by my words. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can lift things if we'll open ourselves up to him. And that's what I want to pray over you today. So if either of those are you, I want you to give me a wave. Let me know that that's you today. I want to pray over you. Okay, fantastic, 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 fantastic. I would like everyone to repeat this prayer after me nice and loud, nice and bold so the person sitting beside you doesn't feel like their voice is the only one they're hearing. And when we're done that, I want to pray over you. So I encourage you to repeat these words with me today and say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Today, Jesus, I open the door of my heart and I invite you, Jesus, to be the leader, the Lord, the Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want to pray over you. Father, today I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you that your Holy Spirit can do things that we cannot do on our own. I thank you that by the power of the Holy Spirit, today things are lifted. God, we declare over people today a lifting of depression in Jesus' name. A lifting of fear, worry, anxiety, stress. We declare that today by your power, Holy Spirit. Father, today I thank you that there is a lifting, God, of frustration. Those who have been frustrated, there's been a delay and they're frustrated. God, I thank you today there is a lifting of that frustration. God, today I thank you that all guilt and shame is lifted off your people today in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I thank you now that you would refresh your people with such an amazing hope. God, we declare over them, let hope arise and your enemies be scattered. We declare over them that hope in your word, hope in the good future you have, hope in the good, good God that we serve. Father, I thank you today that there is a stirring and a releasing of your hope over your people. And Father, today we thank you that we can just receive under that fountain of your goodness, your mercy, and your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you so much for joining us today. If this is your first time with us, we'd love for you to reach out and say hi. You can visit our website at livechurch.ca. Click that blue, can blue connect button, and we'd love to hear from you. Join us each week at 9, 30, and 11 a.m. right here in the building. Hopefully we can see you again next week. And if you're tuning in with us online, join us each week at 11, 12, 30, 2, and 4 p.m. Thanks very much, guys. We'll see you again real soon. Take care.